Hey, this is Jamie from Caps Computers, and today we are reviewing Titanfall 2. This FPS is available now for PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. At the time of the recording of this video, Titanfall 2 costs $59.99 US. Titanfall 2 picks up shortly after Titanfall 1. The militia is now on the offensive as the IMC are desperately trying to even the battlefield after their main refueling point to the outer planets were cut off at Demeter in Titanfall 1. Armed with a new super weapon, the IMC are now looking to blow up the militia home planet Death Star style. Players take on the role of Jack Cooper, a rifleman turned Titan pilot, who is thrust into the role of hero when he is partnered with a veteran Titan BT-7274. The plot is at best your standard FPS hero archetype, and it's all pretty forgettable. Characters are one-dimensional, and the best, liveliest character is BT the Titan, which really isn't saying much. On the flip side, the gameplay is much more interesting. I'll be honest, the single player campaign was a pretty dull start, but the sections that added the time traveling and arc tools to the parkour puzzles made the game so much more interesting. There are plenty of parkour in the campaign, although most of the challenging puzzles are saved for the pilot helmet collectibles littered throughout the levels. I just wish it didn't take almost half the campaign to get to the best parts. It would have been a much better idea to start the portal like puzzles earlier. The multiplayer portion is definitely the strongest part of Titanfall 2. Respawn has addressed criticism about the lack of content from the previous title by expanding the number of weapons available for use, the number of pilot abilities, and the number of titans. It gives players a nice line of progression to work through. The maps are good, but they feel like a slightly inferior clone of the Titanfall 1 maps. It definitely feels like each map was inspired by one from Titanfall 1, and I'm not really sure if it's just because their similar textures have been used, or because many parts of the map feel familiar. The two biggest changes in Titanfall 2 is the loss of the burn cards and the adjustment of the Titan gameplay. Frankly, I'm quite pleased with the removal of the burn cards in favor of pre-selected boosts that serves as a kill streak. It makes matches a little more predictable in terms of boosts and rewards strong performances. The Titan kits have been expanded, but now players can only choose between four Titan-specific skills that provide a buff to one of the existing Titan abilities plus a general buff. This results in each Titan having a counter and a much more interesting Last Titan standing experience as teams are forced to work together to protect each other's weaknesses and to adjust their team composition to deal with enemy Titans. Additionally, the rodeo system has been overhauled. The first time a pilot mounts an enemy Titan, they will pull out a battery that can be given to a friendly Titan to boost their shields. The anti-pilot electric smoke ability is now earned through kills just like the ultimate core ability, which gives pilots a better chance of survival when rodeoing. Since shields no longer regenerate, the batteries help extend the life of existing titans and give a bigger role to pilots in the late game. Overall, Titanfall 2's multiplayer feels like a tightly executed experience that creates a symphony out of the chaos. It's intense as both a pilot and a titan. Titanfall 2 definitely puts more emphasis on teamwork, and matches tend to be a lot more predictable with the removal of burn cards. Now this probably isn't going to be a popular opinion among Titanfall 1 fans, but I think Titanfall 2's gameplay is a lot more refined. Something worth a mention is that Respawn has opted not to release a season pass for Titanfall 2. They've in fact pledged to release all post-launch content for free. Yes, for free. Considering how badly the season pass fractured Titanfall 1's player base, and considering the fact that Titanfall 2 is never going to actually see the same population as a Battlefield or Call of Duty title, it's a great decision for Titanfall 2's player base and a really refreshing decision on Respawn's part. The audiovisual experience in Titanfall 2 is solid. For the exception of Jack Cooper during the final cinematic, the models, animations, and textures look great. The soundtrack, sound effects, and voice acting are all enjoyable. My only gripe is the lines in multiplayer are a bit limited, which results in the same few handful of lines being repeated quite often. In a way, Titanfall 1 was very much an extended demo beta test for Titanfall 2. Respawn has clearly spent the last few years adjusting Titanfall 2 based on criticism, and the result is a solid multiplayer experience and a single-player campaign with a few bright spots. While the story is pretty forgettable, Titanfall 2 is easily the forgotten gem of 2016 crowded out by the release of Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty Infinite Warfare at the same time. I'm giving Titanfall 2 8.5 capsules out of 10. If you want to read our full review, be sure to check out the link in the description or in the video's card. I hope to see you soon. This is Jamie from Capsule Computers signing off. Hey YouTube, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and subscribe to Caps Computers for more awesome videos. If you're looking for more videos to watch, check out our review of Shadow Warrior 2 here on the left. And if you're looking for one of the biggest PC releases of 2016, check out our review of Sid Meier's Civilization 6 here on the right.